The phrase anonymous source might conjure images of a shadowy figure in a parking garage at midnight, but not too many student journalists are dealing with that. Let's define the term. An anonymous source is one who isn't clearly identified. There are different degrees of anonymity, and we'll get into that in a minute. Having a source be anonymous weakens the credibility of what they say, of the story it's in, and possibly of the publication. It's always preferable to have sources identified. It helps hold them accountable and adds credibility to the story. There are times when journalists allow sources to remain anonymous. To use an anonymous source, three conditions should be met. The information is highly important to the story, the source has a strong need for protection, and the source's information is confirmed by at least one other source. Editors must weigh the importance of what the source has to say against the weakened credibility of an anonymous source. Only if the importance is very strong should an anonymous source be used, and every attempt should be made to get the source to go on the record. But sometimes a source does have a strong need for protection that argues in favor of granting them anonymity. This is not the same as a source just being uncomfortable being in the story. A strong need for protection must be either legal, where the source might be in legal trouble if they're identified, professional, where the source might lose a job, or social, where the source could suffer serious social consequences. These social consequences do not include a little awkwardness. Think about a situation where a student is willing to talk anonymously about how she was sexually assaulted, whereas if she were identified within the school, it might change her life a great deal. Reporters shouldn't offer anonymity to sources. If a source asks to be anonymous, reporters should not promise it. The reporter should tell the source that they prefer to have sources on the record for credibility reasons, but the reporter can talk with the editor-in-chief if the source feels they have a strong need for protection. The reporter should not tell the source's identity to anyone but their editor-in-chief. Telling the advisor that you're discussing the possibility of using an anonymous source is wise, but don't tell them the source's identity. Advisors have a responsibility to report certain information if they hear it. As I said, there are different degrees of anonymity. The more you can identify about the source, the more credibility they have. It's really a spectrum ranging from fully on the record to some level of anonymity to essentially anonymous to totally anonymous. One last note about anonymous sources. Using them can be a slippery slope. The more your publication uses them, the more sources will want to be anonymous and the more journalists will want to use anonymous sources. So you have to always push to get sources on the record. If you have questions about specific situations, contact the SPLC for help. For the Scholastic Press Rights Committee, I'm Trip Robbins.